Hey guys, my name's Eddie, and this is my first time doing video, so don't dog me too bad. But today I want to show you a couple of methods of checking CFM, and that's the most important check when you're uh, looking at an air conditioner. You want to make sure you got enough air going through your coil. There are several different ways of checking them. Yeah, the show first you a method we're going to go over is uh, static pressure. Alright, now it's not the most accurate way, but as far as tools goes, it's the cheapest way. I mean, really all you need is a differential uh, manometer. That's just to measure, uh, the same thing you would use for measuring gas pressures or whatever, but uh, that measures the static pressure. You're going to need two static pressure tips. And these are basically just an L-shaped rod. It's got a bunch of little, or two little holes going through it. And that goes into the ductwork. You need just a couple of tubes. And you need your uh, manufacturer literature. Uh, this is going to tell you what the CFM should be once you get your static pressures. So first, you're going to hook your hoses to your manometer. And you hook your static pressure tips on the other end. And when you take your measurements, you need to measure before the filter and before the blower motor. Sometimes the little burgers get on. So you want to measure, you want to stick one of your, you want to drill two holes so you get these in. You'll stick one in your return airdrop before your filter. You want the you want this L part to face the direction the air is blowing. So if you're blowing up, you want your arrow pointing up. If you're going sideways, you want your arrow pointing sideways. So just aim this the, the direction of the of the blower air. So you want to go before the filter, and you want to be in after the blower, but you have to be before your coil. Sometimes you have a small piece of duct in between your furnace and your coil. You could drill a hole in there, stick it in there, that would be perfect. Nobody ever installed furnaces that way, so you're never going to find that. Uh, or typically what I do is I pull the limit switch out of the face plate of the heat exchanger here, and I just kind of stick mine in right there. Now you'll have to put a piece of tape in there because usually the hole is real big. Put a, get a piece of metal tape, cover that up, and stick a little hole through that metal tape and put that in there. Make sure your point is pointing up. So we're going to stick that in there. Some of these furnaces are a little tight to get into. We'll get it here. Alright, so that's in there. You want to turn your meter on, you want to zero it out so it shows zero on here. Alright, on some manufacturer, when you're looking at these charts, it'll say uh, the CFM with filter or it'll say CFM without filter. Now, if it's without filter, if it says without filter, there's a, set, there's a different procedure you got to use. Instead of doing it in the return air duct, you need to measure it after the filter. So after the filter and below the, or before the blower, I normally would drill a hole like I did here and just stick my probe in here. So it would be like this if it says without a filter. Now, also on here it says that if there's not a filter in it, just assume an additional 0.1 inch water column. So you can always add 0.1 inch too, but we're just going to set this already made up. That's what we're going to do. It. All right, so we've got the static probes in. We get the machine on. I'm going to turn the blower on. for a second. And on here, see if I can zoom in a little bit so you all can see this. 
you all can see there, uh, but running right at about a 0.6. Right around 0.6 uh, static pressure, 0.6 degrees, somewhere right in that area. Got a new filter in it. Now, ideally, you want it. You want these things to be around 0.5. But that's all in the duct design and everything. But this particular system, we're running at a 0.6. All right. So all you do to determine CFM now is to get your manufacturer literature here. Zoom this back out. You're going to need to know what size furnace you're, you've got. I don't know if y'all can see this or not. We'll get around here. We're going to do it this way. Alright, so basically, it's going to tell you what how many BTUs you want to drive. I've got a 9014. And it's going to want to know. If it's bottom side, bottom only, bottom sides and bottom. So you pick which one fits your furnace. But on a 9014, it's just bottom or side. Then you're going to need to know what blower speed you're on. This furnace is currently set at high speed. So now what we're going to do, we're going to use this top row here. We're going to come over here to point six. And we're going to come down here. This is really hard to look at the camera. To 90. 14, we're going to come over and right underneath 0.6, it gives me 1285 CFM. Alright, so right now we're pushing 1285 CFM through the ductwork, and you want to get an average, you should have 400 CFM per ton of air conditioning. So 400 CFM times 3 would be 1200. This is a 3 ton air conditioner. So we're a little over what it should be, about 85, but not too good off the bat. And later on, I want to show you all how to get take this information and convert it to a formula to determine how many BTUs an air conditioner is producing. But you have to know CFM first. Uh, you can't possibly know what an air conditioner is doing if you don't know what the CFMs are. So this is one method. It's not too bad off or accurate, but it'll get you the ballpark. Alright. The second the second way is to actually measure inside of depth work what the CFM is. You need an anometer for that. So let me get that set up and we'll roll